Very special interview for you guys today on TYT Sports. We are going to be discussing the World Cup, but not necessarily the World Cup that you guys know. We have, of course, Carla Dowden, who put out a video. Uh, why I am not going to the World Cup, mm. you should absolutely, absolutely check it out. <laughs> Concluding this interview, of course. But if you want to check it out, link is in the description below. So, Carla, uh, you came over to... Firstly, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for coming in. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Uh, you're a very hard person to get in touch with, so I appreciate <laughs> you guys you know, giving us the time. So, your video, mm -hmm. Why I'm Not Going to the World Cup, where exactly did the idea come from? And you mm -hmm. kind of, before I even ask my second question, you kind of said, I'm not you know, heavily involved with certain aspects of, you know, the Brazilian national team or what have you, mm. but you kind of said, I'm doing this out of passion because mm -hmm. you just kind of want to do the right thing. Yeah. Why exactly? Well, the idea for the video started from a completely different concept. It was more about really the fact that everyone here in the U.S. would tell me, like, oh my God, you're from Brazil, I'm going to the World Cup. And every time I had to tell them, you know, it's, it's not that great, it's this and that and that. So the video the f initially was going to be more of a satire of, like, how, how the world sees Brazil and how everything's about the World Cup in Brazil. And then the more I started researching about it, and, and when I was writing the script for the video, mm -hmm. the more I started to find out you know, about the problems that were going on. I mean, I already knew there were problems, and I already knew it was not a really good idea to have the World Cup in Brazil. But I really didn't know the depth of, of the problems, the dimension of the whole thing. So, so then with the research, it became more and more evident that I, I wanted to do something more political and that would tell people exactly what's going on. And, and kind of changed this image that Brazil is selling, has been selling for so long, you know, of all oh, we're doing so great, we're this new economy, you know, when, when in fact, yes, there's a lot of money coming into our country, but, but we have problems in our bases that have to be solved before that money can come. So. Certainly, and not only that, I mean, I was reading a few reports, mm -hmm. when South Africa had the World Cup, they had to prepare and prepare mm -hmm. and prepare, yet they only brought back, I believe, the report said 10%. Mm -hmm. of what they actually spent to prepare for the World mm -hmm. Cup. So that's a little interesting nugget right there, I suppose. But you told us about the UPPs, I believe yeah. is, mm -hmm. is, is the name. They go, just clarify for me, because it seems insane to me, and that democracy would be like this. They go <coughs> into people's homes, well, and they just sort of throw them out and destroy their homes? Well, yeah, that's, it's a very controversial issue. The UPPs, there are people who love them, there are people who don't like them. Uh, they're the pacifying police units, so that's, that's a different thing uh, from the evictions. Uh, they're just going, it's the pacification campaign, so they go into the favelas uh, to take the gangs away. They're heavily armed, and there, there are a lot of missions, and they they, they take drug dealers out and they had some success. They did like uh, fight drugs and, 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 and fight some of the, the main uh, drug dealers in mm -hmm. Brazil. The problem is that it's like I say in the video is a temporary solution. It's like you're taking them away, you know, when our prison system is completely um, un over capacity. Yeah, over yeah. capacity and, 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 uh, and not working properly, you know, mm -hmm. when people go to jail because they steal butter with the same people that I killed. You know, it's just so so much problems in our you penitentiary. Were joking, right? No, no, I'm serious. That's serious. Uh, that's serious. Yeah. Th that's a huge also discussion in Brazil how but that's a whole another discussion of how our penitentiary system needs work. Okay. But basically, the UPPs they they're saying, oh, you know, we're taking the criminals away, but but it's really where are they taking them to? You know, so it's it has been proven that a lot of uh, criminal criminality has increased in other cities where criminals were taken to, and then and the thing about evictions is another story. So for the the World Cup and the Olympics, there they're taking a lot of people from their houses to to build things yes. you know for for the events to build what exactly um all sorts of things uh, roads or uh or even uh areas for the stadium or like the indians the native indians that were kicked out recently because of the museum of the olympic committee mm -hmm. um so and they're they're removing those people with very little support in the sense that they say, oh, okay, we'll we'll give you a house, but the house they offer from the program, my house, my life, which is a, a national program for for these evictions, they're they're far away from where these people used to live. There, so they're like thirty kilometers away, and which it's in miles. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know my my math. Okay, we'll do Google later. Maybe half okay. of that. Yeah, okay. fifteen. Yeah. Um, 
so <laughs> so they they take those people really far from from where they used to live, where they had been living for 40 years, 30 years, you yeah. know? Yeah. Basically what you're saying is, and what I saw from your video, yeah. and then you basically referred to a few links in the description, yeah. and there was a woman who tried to hold the lock, yes. basically, yes. to her door. Yeah, I mean, that's so a really did, good video. So what did they do yeah. with her? I mean, they just pushed her to the side yeah. and just said, you know, yes. you know, skedaddle? Yeah, some houses they demolished with things inside. So with, with furniture, with things because people didn't want to leave and or because it was last minute. And they 24 hours, roughly 24 hours to an hour, Sometimes. basically to pack up their things. Yeah, yeah. In some cases it was done in a more proper way, but in some cases it was done in an extremely uh, improper way where people would just, they would mark their houses and, you know, say, okay, you're being kicked out and, and so, so many hours. But um, yeah, and then when they do offer money to people who don't want to move to this new place, it's very little money. That doesn't buy them a land even close to yeah, where they're Yeah, I was going to say, how much are we talking here? Uh, very little, very little. Because these, this land where the favelas are is actually very noble land. Many favelas have beautiful views there and beautiful mountains. So there's a lot of real estate st speculation going on behind that too. Mm -hmm. Because after these events, you know, it's another reason to take those people out and as an excuse, you know, for the big investors to put money in those lands. Sure. So um, the question here is really if if there's need for this, the, these evictions to happen, if, if you know these constructions that are supposedly going towards the World Cup and the Olympics, are really the the reason why these people are being removed. And now, a lot of the other things that you said in your video, and again, this is uh, um, why I'm not going to the World Cup mm -hmm. by Carla Dowden. The illiteracy rate is at 21%. Has that increased at all? It reaches 21% in some places. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the north east of Brazil, okay. uh, mainly. Uh, so that's that's as high as it gets. Uh, the average, I believe, is around 10% or 13%, really? which is it, which is very high still. Oh but so then you also said that they rank 85 in the Human Development Index. So mm -hmm. that's basically life expectancy and education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, basic level of quality of life, health, uh, education. None of those have improved. Since your video at all? Oh, since the video, no, I don't think so. Oh, no, Jesus, no. Such a shame. Yeah. Thirteen million people are underfed, and the money from the games goes straight to FIFA. Mm -hmm. So, what percent do you believe Brazil will see at the end of this event? You mean what percent in return? Yeah. I really don't know in terms of, of money how much is going to come. I mean, I'm sure there is going to be money, you know, and and I understand. Yeah, there will be more investors. You know, people will be looking at the country differently. The problem is is that it doesn't matter how much money we keep getting if we don't fix our our system first. So if the the money is not properly distributed, Brazil has has a lot of money, but the money is concentrated in the hands of very few people. It's just a pyramid, you know. It's very few rich people and a, a very big uh, lower class. Mm -hmm. So. It doesn't. It doesn't help to have. I think it's. It's about our priorities, and, and, and not about the money that is coming in. But it's what do we want to make with our money? We have a lot of public money. I mean, we pay really high taxes, and still, is we don't have education. We don't have basic uh, health. We don't have um, security. I mean, Brazil is a very violent country. When you so say basic health, you mean basic needs in hospitals? I mean, do you mean yeah. that, the, that the hospitals are over capacity mm. with not enough doctors on site? Yes, mostly. We have actually a really good um, public health system in theory. In theory, it's a beautiful system where everyone would have access to public health. Okay. The problem is that in practice, yes, it's the hospitals are over capacity. I mean, I just shot the third video that I'm releasing in the beginning of the year about the World Cup, and I went to a public hospital. Uh, that my friend works at, and it, it's, it's so sad. You see people in the hallways, you see rooms with more than eight people that were just <laughs> operated, and that's what we're talking about, like big surgeries, and, and you know, and it's in the, ho the hospital, the conditions are just nasty, it's just dirty, and, and just very badly taken care of. So, so, you're, te so you're telling me, not to interrupt you, mm -hmm. you're telling me that a room that in the States would seat Two people mm -hmm. max are seating mm -hmm. eight to ten, eight yeah. to twelve. Yeah, yeah. They don't have. They don't even have curtains around them. So like these people are operating. They're right there. You know, vulnerable to sure. to everyone who's passing by, and it, it's it's depressing. It's really sad. And when you see that people have to. So, so we, and in theory, you know, the system is good because it, it it offers public health to everyone. Like you can go there and you can get public health. 
you can get uh, you can be seen by a doctor for free but but it's the quality of it that it's just and and the money that is deviated that should go to places and it's not the corruption which is another huge problem in brazil so that again it doesn't doesn't matter to have more money coming in if we don't if you, have if, if people are if not the seeing people are taking away yeah right. politicians are are putting it in their mansions or lands or out of the country or understood yeah. also um i also did a little bit of research. I believe it's called uh, Fortaleza. Fortaleza, yes. For mm -hmm. Fortaleza. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. American <laughs> way of saying it. Yeah. Uh, child yeah. prostitution is yes. incredibly high there. Are they going to try and police? I mean, they, they say that they're going to. Yeah. But I mean, Carla, are they really going to like put their <laughs> best, th their best effort forward? to try and limit these things when they're mm -hmm. going to have 600,000 people for the World Cup? Yeah, that's what we are really pushing for. In the second video I mentioned that uh, about really having guardianship councils at all times, you know, but but uh, the prostitution tourism in Brazil is, is really big, like it, it's uh, uh, the exploitation of children and everything. So it is a huge issue and uh, honestly I don't think they'll be able to handle it or to control it but I'm hoping so and that's what I'm really trying to also push in, mm. in the videos and in the arguments I've been making. But it is a problem. Is it's it because there's too many people involved? I mean I read a report yeah. where the taxi cab drivers are involved, the hosts at restaurants and yeah. there are pimps out there and, and all these people. Is it just too much of a mob mentality and too many people involved to sort of police? I think so. I think that's part of it. I mean, the police is involved as well in, in some of the biggest corruptions that happen. So mm -hmm. it's it's really hard. It's really a snowball. And when you think about where where can we start from, you know, we have to fix, you know, the police has to get decent money for the work they do. And then you think about the prisons and then you think about it's, it's really a snowball. It's a lot of problems together that only make things get worse and worse and worse. But I mean, I, I really think that one of the solutions is in the very basis of it, which is education, you know, and, and which is still very poor in Brazil. Our public education is it's, it's not good enough. Is that the biggest need for improvement with, with the country of Brazil? I would say it's, it's a good place to start, yeah, because it's, you know, it's the next generations that will be... Um, I, I, I think there's hope for Brazil, but it would take a lot of generations, and, and a big part of improving is really in our education. I mean, you see countries in Europe, you know, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark, it's a, they're very educated, their literacy rate is very low, you know, and there are countries that have a different mentality. Uh, it's a mentality of, of a group, it's a mentality of a whole, you know, in Brazil we still are very selfish. It's a very selfish mentality of everyone trying to take advantage of everyone. It's mm. So, and, and I think that has to change for, for really concrete changes to start coming up. It will take a lot of years, but we're, we're starting well. I mean, it's a good start. I think this whole movement was a good start. The fact that people went to the streets and and realize how many problems we have was a really good start. Just a few more questions for you. There mm -hmm. have been protests throughout and there are some workers who I read via the BBC mm -hmm. and I believe RT. The, the protests were stemmed from three deaths. I believe that there are even more from construction workers who mm -hmm. were working at these stadiums mm -hmm. and they said that they were working 20 hours a day, sometimes yeah. even more. Yeah. Uh, obviously a little harsh, a yeah, little a little ridiculous much. in many other words that I cannot possibly say. Yeah. Are the protests going well? Are they possibly making, I don't know, are they implementing mm -hmm. some of their good causes into the protests and is there a result from it? I think there's been some progress, uh, but but nothing really evident and concrete so far. I mean, there was a lot of pressure because of the situation in Qatar as well. Uh, because, that's the, whole yeah, that's a whole new thing, yeah. you know, and, and FIFA has a lot so of explaining Qatar, to do. So, I mean, there's problems everywhere, unfortunately. Yes, yeah. yes, but but with workers, so the, there is a big pressure, I think, on FIFA to to show improvements. But but the, the problem is that in this state of emergency, you know, where everything can be done because we need to be ready for the World Cup, so many things are passing unnoticed. So a lot of bids are just unfair, you know, the bidding processes are, are not done properly because everything is rushed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, environmental laws you know are being ignored there's this like this this general law of the World Cup that allows allows for things to happen that shouldn't be happening and it's the same with workers I mean it's it's they're taking it to to a whole new level I, I know a lot of stories from other journalists that have been making documentaries about it and things mm -hmm. like that that talk to me in this meantime and you wouldn't believe the stories it's just crazy th things I mean I can share one uh, I, I actually can't one okay, of the, the right, biggest right. ones of them is gonna be in a documentary soon that should be coming out but I 
I can't tell much about it, but it's really a lot of things about about situations, specific situations in stadiums that is just crazy. Okay, all right. Well, we yeah. look forward to yeah. saying that. Yeah, I'll, I'll share that when it's out there. Uh, maybe off air. No, <laughs> so General <laughs> Secretary uh, Jerome Velke, is that how his name is pronounced? Uh, Vel Velke, yes. Velke, mm -hmm. okay. Here's what he said, just as a mm -hmm. Brazilian, react to this for me. It's the wrong time to protest because it is a time where Brazil should enjoy a unique time, a time that Mm -hmm. A time they have not enjoyed since 1950, obviously the last time Brazil hosted the World Cup. A time where they have a national team who won the Confederations Cup, a team that is the potential winner of the World Cup 2014. So there should be support from all Brazil for the organization of the World Cup. We are not asking, as in them, to support FIFA. We are asking them to support the World Cup. We are asking them to support an event they won five times already, and they dream to win for the first time at home. Pele also backed these remarks. Yeah. Do you as well, Carla? Oh, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. It's like, oh yeah, let's forget about everything, you right. know, screw all the problems. The, we, we have a World Cup, you know. It's, it's the bread and circus politics that Brazil has been doing for a long time, you know, with our TV, with everything. It's just like, oh, and, and, and you know, and the worst thing is that I do think that the World Cup is going to come and unfortunately people are just going to forget about all this, you know. And, and I'm not saying we shouldn't, uh, you know, I know some people do have been waiting for this for a long time and, you know, but we really have to learn how to make something out of this, of this moment, of everything Agreed. that happened and these attention we have, you know, make something better out of it, you know, and, 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 and now that we have the possibility of bringing the, the world's eyes to Brazil and this international pressure and media, you know, we have to use it in a good way. But I'm really afraid people are just going to forget, you know, people who were in the streets one day will be like, oh, you know, but I'm going to the game. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, I really like soccer. It's, it's like we really have to, to, to stick to the, the ideas we have of what country we want to be, you know, and if um, I, I definitely don't agree with, with what he says. I think it's the opposite. I think that not supporting the World Cup doesn't mean we don't care about Brazil. It's the opposite. I think right. we, care, we care more about Brazil. Yeah, you know? and clearly the higher-ups simply do not get that. You talked yeah. about how you don't want the people who are focusing on the World Cup and even mm -hmm. the major media outlets to to IT sports. I mean, basically what you're saying is you want people to try and never forget about what you have done and mm -hmm. the, the, the efforts that you have done, but also what is going on in Brazil. So how yeah. can people mm. sort of support what we're talking about today? Like, are there petitions? I mean, what, what exactly can be done? Well, there, is, there are some things that can be done. Actually, this third video that I'm releasing in January is going to tell people specifically, like, things that they could do. So, for instance, you know, send an email today to, to uh, the, the Secretary of, go of Government or to, we're, gonna, we're defining which institutions we're going to target. Okay. Uh, sign a petition. There is a petition with causes that is called FIFA, a FIFA, pay your taxes like the rest of us online. Uh, there are ways of getting involved just by really spreading the word and in, in the case of Brazil going to the streets, you know, mm -hmm. which I think is going to happen a lot next year. I think more people will be out on the streets. Uh, and also there is a huge thing now, um, the articulation of the popular committees in Brazil and COP, they nominated FIFA for the Public Eye Awards which is uh, an awards for bad practices in companies. It's, it's a really good thing. It gets uh, international attention. And so people can vote for that mm -hmm. and help to give this visibility to the cause. Uh, for Brazil, I really think it's a matter of, of cons conscientization, of really learning from this and being like, okay, what, what do we want from now on? You know, next time we'll, we won't support this, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's still a lot that can be done for the Olympics, you know, a lot of evictions that can be avoided, a lot of families that can, uh, that can actually be re, not only reimbursed, but re, uh, just, um, uh, how do you say, just, uh, that they can made up for, make up for, for what they did to the families that were already sure. evicted, you know? And, uh, uh, so there's, there's, and, and this is specific points will come out in the next video. We're really trying to, to make some, to bring this whole internet movement to life and, and actually m pressure for, for things to change until sure. the World Cup. Uh, it's m more very specifically, there are four things that can be changed. One uh, is to stop the evictions. And then another one is to end with the exclusion zones. Uh, there's a two mile radius, uh, two kilometers radius around the stadiums that is considered an exclusion zone. It's a zone that is 
Uh, do you need like a ticket to get in there? Do you, I mean, like what? No, it's how exactly it's like it a, it's a FIFA zone where where um, sellers, for instance, street sellers cannot be there. Uh, they oh. they can control the protests there. It's it's basically a place where. FIFA rules, like the FIFA has yeah. sovereignty yeah, over, yeah. like the second video I say. So um, the end to these exclusion zones would, would be another advance. And then another thing, uh, now there is what they call exclusion, I don't know how to translate in English, but it's like um, laws of exclusion. So there, there are certain things that if they're done during the World Cup, the laws are different for the World Cup. Huh. So for instance, acts of protest could be considered terrorism, you know, and could ah, be punished similar severely. Similar to the Sochi Olympics, if, you, if, 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 a, if so a gay mm -hmm. man kisses another gay man. Yes, yeah. that that's the, considered, yeah. yeah. So, so we want the end of that. Uh, so we talk about evictions, that, that. And then the fourth thing is um, if FIFA pays taxes to Brazil, which she still can do. There's a lot of money that could come from the tax. It makes a lot of money with mm -hmm. this whole event, so it's a, it's a symbolic thing as well, but would would be a good advance and all sure. that. So we're well, pushing for that. Well, well I, I mean, I just want to say, um, firstly, it was a pleasure to have you in. I really appreciate mm -hmm. you coming you. in uh, coming in studio. What you have done with your video was not only bring knowledge to five million plus people, but you struck a nerve with what the Young Turks is all about, which mm -hmm. is not just necessarily power to the people, not sort of that cliche, but it's also just bringing knowledge to a situation that is somewhat, as you said in your first video, sort of swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. It's just something that a lot of people don't really want to talk about and don't yeah. really want to address. I mean, I was telling you about a simple YouTube search. Couldn't find anything about protests, anything, not necessarily negative, but just what's going on in Brazil right mm, now. Yeah. For the first two pages, I believe, a simple YouTube search, nothing came up at all. Yeah. So I'm just saying, for for you personally, I think you're doing a great thing. Thank you. For the people that are watching, hopefully they act upon it and not mm -hmm. just watch and comment on a video. I mean, yeah. I think together we can really make a difference with this. Yeah. But just uh, on behalf of everyone, I just want to say thank you for hmm. bringing this, this sort of issue to light mm. because again it's just being swept under the rug repeatedly a lot of people are getting forced out of their homes mm -hmm. a lot of crazy stuff is happening in a democracy that you never ever thought yeah. would happen so thank you very much thank Carla. you it's where can people pleasure. find your stuff as well uh, my youtube channel youtube.com slash carla dowden and then I have a website, carladowden.com. And, and on Facebook, I'm trying to add as many people as I can, but I, I reach the limit, so I, I, I'm sorry if I There's couldn't add you. Well, there is, yeah, I think 5,000. Oh. So, yeah, after I, so I'm, I was trying to add everyone and to answer to all messages, but it's kind of hard, but, but you can follow me on Twitter as well, at Carla Dowden, so. Carla, thank you so much Thank again. you, really appreciate it's a it. pleasure.